The next day, Saturday, um, was only a, bit, a lot of uh, activity and a lot of uh, talking on the radio and the television, of course. And the following day, that is Sunday after the Friday that the president was shot, uh, my family and I, my wife and my two small children, had been to church and had just come back and were planning to go to uh, dinner. Uh, while they were upstairs getting ready, uh, I thought to myself, well, I'll turn the television set on in my living room and see what's going on. And I did that, and as I turned the television on, before the picture formed, I could hear the sound, and somebody was saying, he's been shot, he's been shot. And I thought, my God, now what? And the form uh, of the picture, uh, the picture formed, and I saw that Ruby had just shot Oswald uh, in the police station when they were transferring him from the police jail to the county jail amid a big crowd of people and newsmen who were down there while that transfer was being made. And um, Oswald had slumped to the ground. So I walked to the foot of my stairway at home and called up to my wife. I said, I'm going to have to skip lunch because uh, they just got shot Oswald and I need to go to Parkland to see what I can do to help. My wife called down and said, who is Oswald? And I said, that's the man they said shot President Kennedy. Oh, she said, well, we'll see you later. She was accustomed to uh, making that statement. <laughs> and so I got in my car and drove out toward Parkland. I was about 15 minutes away from it. And on my way there, I saw a familiar car. There was Dr. Shires, my chief of surgery, who had returned from Galveston. And um, he was heading toward me. He had just been to Parkland. Uh, seeing some patients of his, and we stopped our cars along the side of each other and let each other know that we had just heard what had happened uh, at Parkland about the Oswald. So he turned his car around and we sped out to Parkland and pulled up to the back of there, uh, which you could do at that time, and ran into the emergency room. Uh, Ms. Nelson was there again that day, and she indicated to us that uh, that Oswald had been taken into trauma room two across the hall from trauma room one where the president had been treated on Friday. So we looked into trauma room two, saw that it was a beehive of activity, uh, nurses, uh, orderlies, uh, interns, and residents who were working on Oswald pumping blood into him to get him back uh, into some sort of shape to get him to the operating room so he could be explored. What had happened to him, the nature of his injury, was that as he was walking toward Ruby uh, and saw Ruby approaching him from the crowd with a pistol pointed at him, he naturally, as anybody would have, uh, tried to avoid that. But the way he avoided it was unfortunate because he turned his left side uh, to the pistol and the bullet, instead of going straight through from the front to the back, where it would have caused some injuries, but perhaps not fatal injuries, instead caused a uh, undoubtedly fatal injury by traveling across his retroperitoneum and injuring both his aorta and his vena cava uh, just when they came to the diaphragm. Now normally, of course, that's an immediately fatal injury or on the spot, but as luck would have it, the way the uh, hemorrhage tamponaded, uh, he did not bleed out on the scene, but they were able to get him to Parkland, get him resuscitated, and back up uh, to the operating room. Uh, and the operating team then consisted of Dr. Shires, who was the operator of record, and Dr. Perry, who was up in the operating room at that time, and myself, and Dr. Ron Jones, who currently is the chief of surgery, uh, just retired, chief of surgery at Baylor Hospital here in town. He was a fourth year resident at that time in Parkland. So uh, Dr. Shires opened uh, Oswald's abdomen and was making good progress down through the hematoma uh, to see if he could get clamps onto the vessels for repairing them. But just at that point where he was about to apply the clamps, uh, Oswald rested also. Uh, Dr. Perry and I dropped out of surgery. Dr. Perry opened the, his left chest and we massaged Oswald's heart, 
Uh, and initially it looked like he was going to have good contraction, but then it quickly stopped again and got flabbier. And that went on for about 20 minutes until finally it became apparent that uh, open massage or anything else was not going to be effective. So Oswald was declared dead uh, too. We went back uh, after that had happened out to the nurse's station in the operating room where Mr. Lovell, the police detective who had been a handcuffed to Oswald at the time he was shot, uh, was sitting there waiting to see what happened during the operation on Oswald. And we told him, uh, of course, what had happened. And he said, well, you know, as soon as he was shot, I unlocked the handcuffs and got down over his face and put my face down into his, and I said, son, you're hurt real bad. Would you like to tell me anything now? He said, with that, Oswald looked up at him for a long few moments, and he said, finally, he shook his head like that, very strongly from side to side, that he did not want to say anything. Mr. Lovell said, I will believe till the day I die, though that he was thinking about whether he would say something and decided better about it because it was critical information perhaps. Anyway, that's what happened uh, with Oswald uh, on that day and what had happened, of course, I just described to you uh, on Friday when the president was shot.